In South America, EU-approved slaughterhouses produce horse meat for Europe. Whereas in Switzerland, restaurant and butcher shops purchase horse meat from South America, in the EU countries such as France, the Netherlands and Belgium and Italy, it is bought primarily by the supermarkets. About 11,000 tons of horse meat from torturous production come from Uruguay and Argentina. In Uruguay, there are three EU-certified slaughterhouses. The most important one is Clay. The slaughterhouse veterinarian in charge of animal welfare, Dr. Caruso, claims that Clay is meeting the EU standards. For example, severely injured animals would be euthanized immediately. But only 100 meters away, some minutes after this conversation, we see two badly injured horses. EU standards include weather protection, not so with clay. In the slaughterhouse pens, the horses are exposed to the blazing sun. They have to get along with straw and hay if these are available. These images from October 2016 show that lack of weather protection in 2015 was not accidental. It's rainy, stormy and chilly. The paddocks are flooded. The horses are turning their hindquarters against the flogging rain. Images of horses that are roaming in green pastures are just a figure of imagination made up by the marketing people in Uruguay and Europe. Also the treatment of the horses, like here during unloading, does not comply with EU standards. From above, they are being jostled and hit, which scares these flight animals. One horse steps into the gap between truck and trailer. Transport trucks like these have been designed for cattle and are inappropriate for horses. This is also an infringement of EU standards. These trucks don't have a protecting roof, the tie beams are too low, and the trapdoors are not high enough for horses. Horses are not being held separated. Hierarchical fights during transport lead to stress, injuries, and even death. Slaughterhouse Sorel. Here as well, there is no weather protection. No pastures, just paddocks, which are dusty in the summer and muddy in the winter. Here as well, injured and sick horses are without any medical care. Here too, emaciated and weak horses. Slaughterhouse El Amanecer. On the pastures behind the plant, we find horse carcasses. The cause of death is unknown. Lack of veterinary care is the norm. Nobody pays for that, we are told by European importers. Rather than healthy horses coming from wide pastures, horses in a most deplorable state are being slaughtered. Importers are also lying about this when they claim that high quality horse meat is being produced. It's torture meat, nothing else. The horses are hosed down, water splashed in their faces, and electric prods are being used. The stunning shoot is slippery, causing horses to even fall down. The slaughterhouse El Amanecer is not allowed to slaughter horses anymore, according to information we received. When we returned to the plant in October 2016 though, horses were being slaughtered illegally. The slaughtered horses come from very different sources. Some of them are even smuggled in from Brazil. Others come from blood farms, where blood is extracted from pregnant mares until they are worn out. Those who don't die in the process are sold to the slaughterhouses Clay and Sorel. They also come from horse races and rodeos. We have visited such events. In 2016, we visited several horse races, so-called raids, with racing distances of up to 115 kilometers, along common roads, on dusty gravel paths and asphalt streets. Pickup trucks follow the horses. Assistants are standing on the truck flatbeds, hosing the horses down with water. The horses have to keep running, even when they are already at the end of their forces. Most horses never reach the finish. We find them collapse at the side of the horse race. They have fallen down and are injured. They are surrounded by many people who try to get them back on their feet with water, electrolytes and pain relievers. Open wounds are being stitched without anesthetics. The horses endure all of these procedures without resistance as they are completely exhausted. Violently and by any means possible, the powerless horses are forced through the finish line. There are veterinarians and assistants waiting to prevent the horses from dying of exhaustion. Muscle hyperacidity, pain, dehydration, all can be fatal. Both jugular veins are opened. Drugs and electrolyte solutions are injected. 26 liters of liquid in a short time. Nevertheless, horses frequently die during the days after the race, according to information from insiders. 
Rodeos are not organized to wear down horses, which would also be animal cruelty, but to entertain people. A rodeo horse must not become rideable. It can only be used if it bucks and rears up spectacularly. For that to happen, the horse is tortured. It is maltreated and injured by spurs. Straps cause the mouth to bleed. It is beaten with whips to start bucking. Blindfolded, the horse is fixed to a pole. If the horse goes down, he is beaten to stand up again. The spectators are supposed to get excited and nervous for 10 seconds. That is the time the rider has to stay on the horse. Then he is released. The horses are being traumatized on purpose. At the next rodeo, the horses should know what will happen to them, so they provide another spectacle. Horses which don't surrender stay in the cruelty circuit. Horses which capitulate are sold to the slaughterhouses. Their meat yields a final profit. Worn-out horses are frequently traded at auctions. A horse dealer advises us against buying horses at auctions, because you will never know where they are coming from, he tells us. A dealer delivers horses. There is a foal among them, unprotected against the other horses during transport. In the auction pens there is pure misery, a broken leg, open wounds, and ruthless treatment. In the auction ring we see the horse with the broken leg. Frightened horses are being chased around frantically. Even this emaciated gelding has to be shown in the ring. He and many others should never have been transported. Also at this auction there are violations against EU standards. There is no water and no feed. Exhausted horses without shelter from sun. Among them injured and lame horses. The loading is rough. At the collection station of an important horse dealer, we find horse bones. This is typical when horses are left by themselves and die in the pastures. They don't live in the wild, but in the care of the dealer, Bardanka. There is a horse whose swollen hind legs should have been treated. Two horses are tied together by their heads. The situation is similar at the dealer Bonfisco's premises. Here too, horses' remains are scattered on the ground. Again, we find injured and lame horses. The loading ramp should never be used. We want to know if there is a reliable way of tracing horses that are being slaughtered for Europe. Dr. Cabanas confirms that horses can't be distinctly identified. Until now, implanting microchips like on cattle is only a thought. Consumer protection is non-existent. Traceability impossible. We have been monitoring the Lamar slaughterhouse near Buenos Aires for years this time for several days in a row. We want to know how horses are being treated, what happens to animals that are injured and sick. The result is worse than we had imagined. Some pens are overcrowded, others almost empty. Hierarchical fights cause stress and injuries. Today, slaughtering takes place. The workers beat the horses in the chute. They hit them on their heads and squirt water in their faces. We see lame animals in the chute. At the entrance to the slaughterhouse, a worker hits the horses for several minutes. This is no professional handling of animals. On the paddocks, there are no shelters against weather. It's hot, 38 degrees Celsius. When it rains, the dusty paddocks turn into slippery mud pools. No money is spent on injured horses. The European customer doesn't want to pay for that. Weak horses are the losers when they fight for position and don't reach the few feeding places. They remain hungry. This horse should have been put out of his misery by being euthanized immediately according to EU standards. Instead, he is left without any care for several days. European importers say that quality meat is produced at the Lamar slaughterhouse. They are either knowingly lying or they are being lied to by the slaughterhouse management. They should know better as we are showing them every year what we see on the spot. Contrary to the announced audits of the European importers in the EU, we arrive unannounced, and we see the reality. Pregnant mares are slaughtered as well. We observe foals which have been born just before slaughter. A short life. A wire has been tied through the mouth of a stallion to prevent him from biting. He is unable to eat. A severely injured horse can only stand on three legs and another one has a deep wound on its shoulder. The workers don't care about all that. We see a mare with a swollen carpal joint. A stallion, also injured, approaches her. She fends him off, regardless of her pain. The stallion is also weakened by the injuries on his hind leg. They stay together, disabled, until they are moved into the slaughterhouse. Here, a profusely bleeding wound on a foreleg. There, a serious gapping head injury, deep to the bone. 
All images have been taken covertly in only four days between December 19th and 23rd, 2016. The following day is Christmas and many people in Europe consume horse meat during these holidays. The Argentinian slaughterhouses Lamar, Entre Rios and General Pico are being supplied by this collecting station. At the moment, 80 horses are here, but more than half of them are sick, we are told by a worker. They suffer from equine infectious anemia, EIA. In the EU, horses infected with EIA are not allowed to be slaughtered for human consumption. The Argentinian Veterinary Authority, SENASA, demands that they be slaughtered. They end up in the slaughterhouses Lamar, Entre Rios and General Pico. All of them supply the EU and Switzerland with horse meat. The slaughterhouse General Pico is surrounded by a tall fence with visual cover. To get a glimpse of the horses, we climb a tree. Here too, like everywhere, we witness the South American standards of treating horses, blatantly in contradiction to the EU standards. Dogs are used to move horses. One of them bites a horse in his hind leg. Two lame horses are being moved with a group. The horses are kept without any weather protection in paddocks which are dusty in summer and muddy in winter. Emaciated horses, pregnant mares, foals, they're all mixed up. Injured horses remain untreated. It has rained a bit the day before and deep mud has formed already. The traceability asserted by European importers is just wishful thinking. We don't see any horses with ear tags. There is an injured horse lying in the mud beside a hay bale. A bird of prey is pecking flesh from the wound. The horse is too weak to defend himself. He should have been euthanized immediately. We drive to the slaughterhouse Entre Rios and watch the arrival of a horse transporter. We can't get access into the slaughterhouse, only to the fields behind. From there we filmed rundown paddocks in 2015 at night, injured horses and how horses were moved into the slaughterhouse. We could see horses falling down one after the other on the slippery floor. Behind the slaughterhouse there was at that time a pit filled with horse carcasses. Not much has changed since then. It's only that the site has become even larger where we find horse carcasses and bones. A person that we cannot reveal accompanies us. This person tells us that horses regularly die on the trucks, during hot journeys up to four horses per truck. The horses break down during the long transport due to exhaustion and are trampled to death by the other horses. We are told that people living in the vicinity come here when horses are delivered to cut off meat from the dead animals. The people are poor, says our informer. The bones and carcasses are covered by a green plant carpet. Everywhere we look, there are bones or remains of organs. Death is for all horses shown in this film, a liberation from an ordeal of unbearable agony. All the horses in this film are now dead. They are now being served as sirloin, steaks, or sausages in Swiss restaurants and butcher shops, or lying as such in the display counters of EU European supermarkets. The Tierschutzbund Zurich, the Animal Welfare Foundation, and their partner organizations in Europe, the USA, Uruguay, and Argentina call for an import ban of torture meat from overseas. Importers, retailers, and consumers in Europe need to act accordingly, and politicians must acknowledge the suffering of the animals. The EU needs to stop evading their responsibility by denial of competence. A ban on horse meat imports from Mexico has already been imposed but consequently the same measure must be applied against Uruguay, Argentina and Canada.